Hey, this is LOA Today, the Law of Attraction show. Welcome to LOA Today, Walt Thiessen and Joel Elston here. It is Thursday, February the 16th, 2017, and we continue once again with our ongoing uh, exploration of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, Joel, last week we were talking about Chapter 9, Persistence, and uh, I, I have to honestly say it is persisting, in my mind anyway, because there was a one last section we didn't get to. I mean, that's par for the course for us. We are... We have so much to say about these things that uh, we rarely finish the whole chapter. But I wanted to at least touch on this one because it has a bit of a controversial tone for today that didn't actually exist so much in uh, Napoleon Hill's day. I mean, I'm sure it existed to a certain degree, but not like it does today. And that's because it was a segment about Muhammad, the prophet who helped to found the religion of Islam. And uh, Hill's purpose in writing about Muhammad was basically to point out all the different ways that he had to persevere against incredible odds, and he, he, was, uh, he didn't even start uh, developing the religion until he was in his 40s. Um, he spent 10 years preaching, and basically it left him banished and, and impoverished and with no followers, and yet he persevered and created a new religion. Well, that's the story that Napoleon Hill is trying to um, um, use as an inspiration. And that, that's a little bit of a challenge, perhaps, for people today, because um, there is a lot of negative perception about the religion of Islam today. And uh, while we don't really want to get into all the stuff about terrorism and so forth, obviously that's what, what uh, feeds it and what informs it. So I just thought we should just take a moment to touch on the fact that uh, something that was actually controversial in Hill's day is more controversial rather than less controversial today. And we, we have... Uh... The, the blessings that we have of of, of today and, and all the all the positive we have going on there's so many uh, but as you're saying when this book was written the the one of the contrasts that you're able to see is minimally you know we can look at it as how he's stating it in his perspective and looking back on how things over the years have evolved and what we're looking at today and and you know how we perceive things so it is a it wasn't controversial at the time uh, but today, there's people that will read this and 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 may have an, a reaction to it. And part of the only reason that I, I sort of glad we're touching on this instead of, as you're saying, getting into our opinions or any discussions in that area, is simply realizing that this book was written at at a much different time now, where so much of it is so incredibly relevant and dead on today. There's very few issues that are more controversial today than they were there. This this happened, at least as far as I'm concerned, this is the only one that I'm aware of that is more controversial or, or, or probably has a much different impact than intended written in the book. Yeah, I'm sure he didn't have any intention that this was going to be the most controversial part of his book when he wrote it. It was probably something he just, he was reaching for stories on how to show how people were able to overcome vast odds in order to achieve objectives. And the last thing he thought was that uh, some 80 years, 70 years later, that uh, the people who were, that, that not the people, some people involved in the Islamic religion were going to be involved in attacking the United States. I'm sure that was the last thought on his mind. Absolutely. And, and that, and that again, that goes to show just how, how our perspective of things can change. And uh, at, at the time, his perspective of that was he's, he's talking about the, uh, the, the chapter was on persistence and, and not giving up. And, and the, the, let, the example he's giving is about that. Uh, but, but today, it, it, ha, it has a different connotation. So I encourage our reader, our, our listeners who are reading this, uh, that are going along with us to uh, whatever your beliefs are. I, I almost always look, find something in that may, you know, when I'm reading something, I may not agree with every single actual word in a, in a in a writing. So don't allow one thing to throw you off track from where we're at, because the general overall consensus of the book is is very much a very positive. This is wasn't a negative at the time, and it's not now, if, unless you have. A certain perception. That's all we're talking about. It's also a, les a lesson in perception because our perception, our focus, our the position that we choose to take when we're looking at stuff directly informs how we feel about it. And this is a great opportunity to desensitize ourselves about you know being overly sensitive to uh, what Islam teaches because there's 
I mean, I, I can honestly say any religion has a lot of negative on it. And most religions have positive on it, too, including Islam. I mean, there, there are actually some very good uh, passages in the Quran. Doesn't mean that there aren't some other passages that are horrible. There are. But, hey, the Bible has the same kind of problem. So do uh, the, the texts of, of Hindu. Um, I mean, even Buddhism has some stuff in it that it's just downright depressing. You read enough of it, you're going to want to go into a monastery and just die. But that's the nature of human uh, humans and, and religions. That's, that's part of the whole thing. So my point is we have the power of perception and the power of perspective. We get to choose what our perspective is. So when you're reading a book like this, if you come to a section that's challenging like that, and it's challenging in a way that, that you just don't even want to have to deal with it, well, that's fine. Just change your pers- pers- perspective and say, I'm not even going to focus on the thing that I don't want to focus on. That's fine. Well, it, well, and, and you know, I, one of the things that I've, I think I've mentioned this a few times on the show in the past is when I was in uh, a position of being a director of, of a couple of treatment centers I worked for, one of my roles always was to do evaluations. And uh, I I would uh, bring an employee in. I would sit them down, and and using my my law of attraction stuff, I would focus strongly on their positives. I would try to set the workplace uh, up for them, so they would be able to really use their strengths and not focus on their weaknesses. However, the process of doing an evaluation, at least from a business perspective, not not a law of attraction perspective, is well, you you can't. I can't give everybody all perfect five stars. You know, you 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 just you know the point of an or, or they're going to be saying. By the way, I you know I need to make the highest maximum salary I can make, and and so you you have to have a, a, a critical eye that that isn't about negative, but what areas can you improve on? And so the the last company I worked for had a hundred uh, questionnaire, a hundred different questions that. Uh, I had to answer with the employee and we would rate them from scale of, you know, one to five. And, and in my mind, and I would tell them this, you know, that so, so they understood, you know, a three is what I'm expecting. A four is outstanding. And I don't do fives. <laughs> it, it's just how, how it, it, it just, it, it, it would have to be something. And inevitably after saying that I would throw in a couple of fives in there too I would, and, and you know, just, just to say, wow, this is your area of great outstanding. You know, it's amazing what you're doing here. And I would spend that on the areas of improvement. If if I had to give someone a one in any area, I would they would be terminated. So that that I wouldn't use ones. Uh, but if I were to use a two, now this area we need to be working on. And inevitably, Walt, I could give ninety eight fours and fives, one three and then one two in which focus do you think the employee left thinking about the two the two that was it right there the one area. yeah and so using that same concept with where we're at here don't allow what is going on internally with you or even in society today to distract from an incredible 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 document and that doesn't just include the the you know thinking grow rich but there's you and i have talked before about uh uh, bruce lipman and his uh uh you know the his thinking of of you know quantum thinking and and all that stuff well some of his stuff is most of his stuff to me is great and then in in his book he just at the end sort of dives off in a sort of negative direction that I choose not to, I, I look at the, the 95% of the book that I'm on, I'm in tune with. And, uh, and I do that a lot with, with other documents. So as we move on to chapter 10 here today, we, it's just necessary to mention this, I feel. And, you know, as you brought up that, you know, j- just when you're aware of this, th- this book is very relevant today. And at the time it was written, there was certainly not the the emotion attached to uh, what was going on with, you know, terrorism and 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 the attempt to uh, equate a certain religion with terrorism. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's not the same environment at all. And uh, I, I think we pretty much touched on everything we need to touch on it. Uh, so I won't uh, go into any greater detail, except I will point out that it is off we, we've talked in the past uh, in, including in our conversations about this book about how when you run into something that you just don't want to do it, there there is on the flip side some validity to the idea that you may need to focus more time on it in order to in a sense get the negatives about it out of your system and well, I'll, and, 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 I'll just, and I'll just leave it at that 
Well, and yes, and and and, I, and and as we're closing on that, I'll open it back up. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> in, in, in one in one in one funny funny sense, the using that same analogy because one thing that I, I tell people about today, and, and when I'm working with the, it's so easy uh, to turn on the news, which I don't do, but it's so easy to turn on the news and then get a preconceived idea about not necessarily this subject but other subjects, and and let it affect you. The reality of today in being positive, it's about learning there are things around us that are not happening the way we want them to be happening. They're out of our control. And by placing our energy and our thought in areas that are out of our control, we're destined to be not in tune with the law of attraction. Yes. So from that perspective, even that being here, if you're reading that and you're, you know, I have some, some, some friends that will, will read that. And before they can even hear what we're saying, they're going to be totally shut down. They're going to just be that, that they can't accept this. Mm-hmm. And to me that that becomes uh, a deficit in life where you can't at least move on. You, you allow the, that, you know, the, the, the entire thing is polluted because your perception of one certain topic. And that, and that's, and that's, a lesson here that was had no part, no no intention when it was written. No, <laughs> but learning learning to be able to use stuff like that as a lesson. I I I was thinking uh, you know last week about uh, again perceptions and and I have a friend who actually is very good friends with Lance Armstrong and uh, he, he that's he, an excellent example because he started off as a hero and he's now a pariah. Exactly, and and you know when, when you when you sit back and you weigh Lance Armstrong again from a, a critical eye, and, and and I look at I can choose to look at the 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 hundreds of millions of dollars he's raised for cancer research, uh, helped kids, helped families, uh, has a very positive story. Yet there's this equal and more in, to some people more intense distraction of his life. And, and who Lance Armstrong is, who he chooses to focus on Lance Armstrong being, and uh, and and that's such a great example because it, he is like most people. There are positives and negatives, and it, it, there isn't anyone who's all either way. And uh, absolutely. And I, so I, I, that's what I'm loving about this this today. It, it brings it, it it opens up a discussion that, as I said, was never intended. But again, it can be brought to the positive because where we're at today, we're going to be, you know, jumping into chapter ten now, and that is one of my most exciting topics in the whole book is is chapter ten. I also want to say one more thing now that we've closed it and reopened it. I want before we close it, I want to say one more thing, <laughs> and that is, uh, while every religion in the world has negatives, they all have tremendous positives too. I mean, including Christianity, for sure. There, there's a lot of good positivity, particularly in the story of Jesus. Uh, and uh, I, for those who find themselves stuck on this point about what Hill was bringing up in the book, what you might remind, remind yourself of if you're a Christian is what Jesus taught us about not throwing the first stone. You don't cast the first stone unless you're without sin. Well... I don't think there's any of us who falls into that category from the Christian perspective. You know, if you're a Christian, you pretty much believe in sin and you pretty much believe you're a sinner. So you really don't want to be casting stones at somebody else. Doesn't mean you want to just sit back and, you know, take it if somebody's attacking you, but that's not really the same thing as whether or not you're going to be casting stones at somebody. So there, there's my final word on the topic. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we, before we you know, dive to a place we can't get out of, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> chapter 10. The chapter power 10. Of the- Yes, power of the mastermind, the driving force, and I, I love how that's worded because this is the ninth step toward riches, by the way. But it, it, the, 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 the wording of the power of the mastermind, the driving force, the thing that, that, uh, you, you know, there's, there's a lot. This can go as deep as you want it to go, and I'm, I'm excited. We're going to be able to do this today, Walt. Because this is one of my favorite parts. It's really amazing how powerful the concept of the mastermind is. Um, and it's one of those things that is probably the hardest to learn when you're first learning this. I mean, I, I guess we could probably say that about any of the earlier chapters about belief and desire and, and all that. But the mastermind is, is quite different because it involves what Hill describes as the creation of a third entity or a third energy between when you have two people um, who are combining their, their mental powers together. And when you increase the number of people involved, then that extra entity becomes even greater. 
that it starts to uh, certainly border on the realm of spirituality, but it also touches on the realm of what you alluded to earlier, quantum physics. Um, the, the whole notion that our entire universe, our entire life is energy-based. And th that's what it starts to point to in a way that was, was suitable for when Hill was writing because the average person at that time didn't have a clue what the word quantum meant, let alone quantum mechanics. And even today, it's still a relatively unknown subject for many people. Uh, but nevertheless, that's what he was pointing at. I, I think probably the most impressive thing from my perspective, Joel, is that he was able to write about it at all without knowing any of that stuff. I mean, he was certainly not an Einsteinian. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the, the depth in which it goes and, and the, the first line in the chapter says power is essential for success in the accumulation of money. Power is essential for success in the accumulation for money, of money. Meaning you, 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 you can't, from a state of weakness, go and, and accumulate money. And while we, we talk about Think and Grow Rich as, as, a, as a money-driven venue, it, it, that applies to so many other areas. Uh, happiness, you can't obtain happiness without coming from a place of power or a positive situation where, where you're going to go get this stuff. It says, plans are inert and useless without sufficient power to translate them into action. This chapter will describe the method by which an individual will, may obtain and apply power. And, and, and every time you use the word power, it is all caps. Now, that even means more. That's another thing that when he wrote this, it had, he had no idea that the Internet would be what the Internet or or that would, there would be an Internet and that all caps is emphasized, obviously, back then. But right now, it's all caps for our younger audience. He's screaming this at you. It's power. And, uh, and, 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 isn't it interesting, interesting too that the, the concept of all cats being screaming at you predates the internet? <laughs> it does. And, and, and that, that I, I'm actually having that thought as I'm reading this right now. I'm like, wow, I, I just not noticed that. Uh, but it, it, it certainly is is relatively um, think the, at the time when he's thinking this this way of thinking. As you're saying, he he wasn't an he wasn't Einstein here. He, this is a guy that that's I, I have to think there's a a, a force at work here helping him obtain some of this knowledge right. and sharing it with us that, that goes beyond because it's so relevant to some of the, the studies today. And, and I, I had a, one of the, the concepts when you hear master, you know, the, the power of the mastermind, the group of, 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 a group of people of shared knowledge of, of bringing things together. I have a, a there's a new treatments program here in the Richmond area that I'm a part of. And I'm just doing some contract worth with them now, and I may be doing some more as time goes on. But we had a meeting of of the the doctor that was in charge of that, and a couple of people this week. And and where that meeting went, where everybody got together, we shared ideas in a positive manner. We we talked about how we could get things done. What what? And by the time we were done, we we. Everybody left the meeting saying, "Oh my gosh, look how I mean this is exciting." Everybody was very excited, and it, I, it was, I love the fact that you emphasized too that you were focusing on everything in a positive manner because that's not the way most meetings go, is it? Right, and and and, and I started the meeting, and, and I wasn't in charge of the meeting officially, but it sort of worked out that way as, <laughs> as, as, I, as, I, as I was bringing the. I said, "Look, well, you know, here let's throw some ideas out there. What what direction do we want to go?" And I said, if anybody here isn't able to focus on how we get these things done or the, the, the exciting things as these go, then please just keep the, it, keep the thoughts of why this won't work to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I have to admit, one of my biggest frustrations is somebody who's trying to help me by telling me why something won't work. Right. Right. And, because and that, that's not, that, it's not helpful. Well, I, I, you know, in, in, in my line of work during the week, I hear that so many times. I mean, when, when I, I, my job as, as a, you know, life coach slash therapist, I, I, I present, my focus is, is what I call solution based. It's about what's happening now. I'm not someone who spends a lot of time diving into how we got here. It's like, you know, you're coming to me because you're having a problem now. Let's, let's start here and go backwards instead of starting backwards and going forward. So the idea that as I bring solutions to the table, I am shocked at the number of times I've already tried that or that won't work. Yeah, right. 
and and you hear you hear that a lot, and so and, and and the thing you also hear, or more precisely, the thing that you don't hear from the people who say, "Well, that won't work," you don't hear the alternative solution. Right. You you hear that a lot in politics. We're going to uh, we're going to do this and replace this with this. Is as I tell people, it's so easy to complain about a problem. Right. I, I I have a rule again when I'm having a meeting. There is no complaints about a problem without a solution. Exactly. Do, do not complain and tell me what's wrong unless you have a solution. Uh, if if you don't like how we're doing something, I have no problem with you bringing an answer to the table. But don't just sit there and gripe that what we're doing. And th- and that's what I was trying to set forth in this meeting. And by setting the ground rules as I said, let's talk in two forms. We talk in the present, and we also talk about what we want as already being here, in the sense that I, our program, not only are we we we're we're going to implement these things, we can also talk as as we agree that's what we want. Let's incorporate that. Let's 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 talk in our program as as okay. We we want to one of the things we want to do is is uh, possibly offer brain scans similar to what the the Amen clinic uh, that that I do work with is is uh, does where it, it does all these spec scans and it does an amazing thing that helps people understand uh, uh, what's going on in their brain so one of the services we may offer as I, as I was talking the meeting is is these spec scans maybe we're going to contract with the Amen clinic and and either us do the spec scans that they read them or you know we'll figure out the details but what what if that's one of the things we added as something you could do through our our, our clinic once everybody agreed that's a great idea, I just started discussing that, okay, now that we are offering brain scans, what other areas can we look at? Mm-hmm. And, and, and you you bring that to, it's an amazing tool to bring that to the equation. Now, there's a lot of steps I'm going to have to do to make all this work, and it may or may not work, but once I'm assuming, and I, once I bring that to the table, that's how the, 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 the mastermind group works, by the, you know everybody coming together and, and understanding that while I am smart and I have a lot of good ideas, I am so much smarter and have so many better ideas when I combine with another group, have a mastermind meeting, when I'm able to get every, all of us together. Uh, you know, that, that idea that there's an infinite amount of wisdom out there once we all get together and do it. And, and, and you know, I, I often amaze myself when we come up with an analogy that I never thought I would use, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, today I'm going to use a Power Rangers analogy. Okay. Uh, for for our younger audience, you know the 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 Power Rangers are are powerful beings. I, I think there's five. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but combined they turn into this really awesome Power Ranger, and and they they all combine their energies and they go forward. Uh, uh, that that is a that's sort of the concept of what we're talking about. And I can assure you. When this book was written, the Power Rangers were, were not on his mind. <laughs> I'm sure that they weren't, <laughs> yes. because they hadn't been invented yet. They hadn't been invented yet. Uh, so, and I don't know that somebody didn't invent the Power Rangers by reading this, but that's a whole other topic. Uh, it, it, it really is an amazing technique of understanding, you know, as it starts off, the driving force, the power attached to it. And there's a lot of the exciting words he uses in this. It's, you know... Infinite intelligence, accumulated experience, uh, you know, the, the idea that everything we have lived in our lives, it, it isn't wasted. It's meant to bring it together. And, and while my accumulated experiences at my age are, are quite a bit, some of them are ex- exciting and, and some would view negative. Uh, I view it as all at this point pretty much all positive. All that stuff I went through, I bring to the table. Now, when I sit down with 10 other people around a table, I bring, imagine all of our stuff that we bring to the, all the stuff we each bring to the table is an incredible perspective. And I laughed as we were having this meeting last week where I had one of the, one of the uh, recovery coaches there is a young man. I, he's probably 20, maybe, um, he, he probably looks 12, but he's about 20 <laughs> and, uh, and, and then we had one of my uh, my mentors, uh, Dr. Sherman Master, was there, and he is 84. So the idea that we imagine that, and there's a, and the, everybody else is in between. Imagine the collective of knowledge in that room. Oh yeah, what it's a huge. powerful room that was. Absolutely, and, and it, again, I want I want to make sure we touch again on what we were talking about before. How important it is for a mastermind to be positive. 
uh, because we actually all are aware of how negative a mastermind a negative mastermind would be. We just don't really think of it that way. I mean, if you want a quick example, take any political argument. All political arguments are essentially negative masterminds because they're about people struggling for power with each other and trying to put each other down and, oh, that'll never work and blah, 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 blah. It's just one negativity after another. It has a very powerful negative impact on people. Well, we know that that's true with politics. Now what happens if you flip it on, on its head and say, okay, now let's have everybody put out positive stuff, positive ideas, positive contributions, and the whole thing changes so dramatically that instead of being an energy drainer, it's an energy uplifter, as your team discovered because they came away from that meeting saying, wow, this was fantastic. Well, that that's the point. If, if the more you... you I know sometimes you have a, 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 a difficulty with the term vibrating, uh, vibrating on a frequency. I'm still trying to figure that one out a bit. but Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I left that room and while I went in very positive, I was even more excited and I could feel I, there was a tangible feeling to me. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, the the doctor that is the owner of the clinic uh, and, and is very excited, he, he, he immediately was like, let – this is I, I'm even more excited now than I was before. And he and he was very and everybody along that was picking up on that excitement. That is the power of it. You you get people motivated. I I I love when you have positive meetings. I've always found them to be. It's easy to sit around and 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 gripe about things and and, and complain as we said earlier. But when you when you're looking at solutions, how are we? You know. How can we help other people? That's the point of what our clinic is. How do we help people who are struggling in addiction? What do we do with that? And what, what areas do we need to, to, to focus? Where, where can we apply our energy? How can we best help? And, and the beautiful thing is everybody had a different perspective, mm -hmm. but yet it was all based for the same common good. And so the, the plans that we came up with and the exciting thing, and, and there were some things that, that – Okay, well, maybe that's not best for our program right now, but we we didn't use that as a chance to put somebody else down and say your idea is stupid. You know, saying that is an incredible idea, but it where we're going that might be something we have to implement at a different stage. And everybody, you're right. I would love to include that down the road. And there, there's there's that, that's critically important. That's such an important point. And and I can even draw from a personal experience. Again, I won't name names, but. One particular person that I, I deal with fairly often has a tendency to do exactly the opposite of what you're talking about there. And I don't think he realizes just how detrimental it is. He actually considers it to be political correctness to say that there's some virtue to an idea that he doesn't want to buy into. And so he's against it because he's against, he's against political correctness. It's his way of, of basically dissing an idea without directly dissing it. It's his own way of being politically correct, <laughs> which right, is really kind right. of screwy. But the, the, the point is, he, he's, he, he's so wrapped up in focusing on why something can't work that he's doing anything he can to stay there. And he doesn't realize how much he brings everything down. If this same person, let me tell you, you're talking about vibration and, and energy. When this guy is in his positive mode, and he does get there, when he's in his positive place, he's probably the most powerful entity you've ever run into. He, he has that much energy that he exudes. And, and what I keep wishing for for him is that he learns more and more to stay in the positive realm. Because if he does, amazing things are going to come out of it. Um, so I guess that's why I keep ha hammering on the positive side and staying away from, from negativity. Because I've seen directly how important it is to stay positive. It, it is. And I... I when you wake up every day and you you make that decision you you I'm going to be positive there's a lot of forces that seemingly are challenging that that weight that mindset and again a lot is about perspective it's a lot about what we can dismiss and 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 what we don't have to take in that's why for me the one of the one of the great things that I discovered was this this concept of turning off the news it it just it it's opens up the mind to everybody's perspective of of the world is falling apart, and you know I find it interesting now which which group of people thinks the world's falling apart compared to 
a year ago who they thought was falling apart. <laughs> yeah, isn't but, it interesting how that flipped? But <laughs> yeah, but 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 again, it's just it's irrelevant because there's one side that's always awfulizing a situation, right? And 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 that that's easy to buy into. But when when we keep it in the positive, we keep these meetings or or this process in the positive of right now, it. it we have to be very careful about that internal dialogue that automatically defeats new ideas. Uh, I, I, I've had uh, many experiences with many different people who are struggling, and, and I've struggled myself in the past. And I am, I am so amazed at the people that are so conditioned of why it won't work. I, I was I had a late meeting with a gentleman last night, and and I was accommodating his schedule because. You know, he he works during the day, and he's a he's a very nice man who who's really been off track with some addiction issues. And he, he would I would say something, and he was so trying hard to say, "Well, I'm not being negative, but yeah, right." <laughs> and then he would proceed. It always to be, has but, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but here's why this won't work, <clears throat> right? And and I I said, well, I I appreciate that. I said, now let me back up and tell me again how alcohol was working there'd be a silence and he said well it wasn't i said so we can but yet you keep telling me why the the recovery stuff won't work but you have no reason of why the alcohol did work and and he he, he didn't realize he was defending his alcohol use and it, it would if you know we still have some more time it isn't like we had to get it all in last night's session but there was a a, a starting of a turning point for him i hope where he could see where everything was a, 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 I'm not trying to be negative, but statement. It was automatically filtered to be negative. And, and that, that's why having meetings, it isn't just about it, having the meeting, but it's about having the meeting and not, uh, not being a negative why this won't work. Um, I, I, you know, and I, I've always said, I, I, when I had meetings before in companies that I worked for, I would tell the group beforehand, why it won't work is not an option here. That doesn't that doesn't happen here. Now, we may come to the conclusion it's not feasible to do because of finances or 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 it doesn't fit our program or the time consumed. But let's don't start with that. Let's look at what would take to inc incorporate that, and then and let's go from there. And we we ask that when you you know when you, when you have a if you've ever seen a couple fight, um, and, and especially from a role of a therapist, one of the most amazing factors I've ever seen is I, had a, I have families in here, but this could be any family. It, it, I see this at least three times a week. Um, and I'll, I'll use a, a mom, dad, and a son. The son's an addict. The mom and dad are there. And I'm looking at the, the addict, the young man, who is sitting there and trying to explain his feelings to his mom and dad. Their body language is, they're so tired of hearing his crap, they, they're ignoring him, they're not facing him, they're rolling their eyes. And and now before he even starts talking, that process begins. They're shut out to whatever he has to say. And then on the other side, the moment they start saying it, he's sitting there, slouched down, oh Lord, you know, rolling his eyes and, and just sighing. And I said, do you understand that you guys are so preconditioned to what the others are going to say that you have no clue? You've already turned them off. And and that's where communication, opening up communication, adding some political, um, not political correctness as much as, as some social understanding of you need to be heard, a positive perspective. Why don't we act as if we all truly love each other, which they do, and why don't we act as if we truly have each other's interests at heart and not not be frustrated. I'm, I, inevitably, every mother of every young man that I work with or a young woman that I work with ha has a call to me, and they're very frustrated because they'll say, Joel, I have told him what you have told him a thousand times, and he came home tonight and told me what you told him like he, you are the one that told him for the first time. And I said, I'm a different messenger. I'm somebody bringing a message to the table that that he had to hear differently. Sometimes we get stuck with our the, our surroundings and we we tune out the messengers that are most important. The mastermind allows us to have that. I see people that I know families that one of the techniques I use I, I create a mastermind meeting within families and and teach them how to do it within families once a week. And by the way, the um, the example of that mother. 
uh, is a good one in the sense that it also is instructive to any of us about how even when we're trying to work with somebody else who has the problem, we can be stuck in our own ways. She was stuck on the idea, kind of an egotistical sort of thing, that she had to be the source of the solution. And she, yes. need, she needed to become unstuck from that because it doesn't really matter where the solution comes from. It doesn't even matter if the person learns it from someplace else. All that matters is that they learn it because that's what the whole goal was. But she had a thing going on where, no, it wasn't enough that he find the solution. It wasn't enough that he start to turn the corner. She had to be the one to help him turn the corner. Right, right. And, and, and I, 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 I see that so much with, with the, the idea – of where people get invested and part of the mastermind process is at the end of the day it doesn't matter whose idea it was let's get better right it, it, and I'll inevitably say to these mothers uh, is your son or daughter using the drug that was about to kill them and their answer is always no thank you that's all we what's the point why did this person come here what's the point can we do we need to worry about where the message came from do we need to worry about you know where where it, it less we're we're there and and that's part of this mastermind thing it isn't about a contest of whose idea it is some of my best ideas in meetings have been spurred by somebody else's idea within the same meeting and so I, I, you know, I, and I compliment everybody, and I thank each individual person in the room when a meeting's over. I thank them. I've never had an idea that I did not. I not that I don't take ownership, and I'm proud that I have a good idea. But I say, well, I wouldn't have got there unless this person didn't say this. So really, it's our idea, and and that's a that's a very positive, uplifting thing to do. We can do that with our family. I mean, the the idea that a lot of dysfunctional family stuff happens. When when we get a negative mindset, but the the you know, a lot of therapists ask to have a family meeting once a, once a week. I find those last about one week if they make it that many weeks. Um, <laughs> they they sell them. However, the concept of selling them on the mastermind meeting is an incredibly effective power. They see it a little differently, and it isn't about airing grievances. It's about airing positives. What are we doing moving forward? What areas can our, our family improve on? How can our family be more successful? Well, there's a, a, a couple here that uh, uh, has had some deep financial trouble. A, a very successful businessman lost his business, and he has uh, three older daughters that uh, you know are about to go to college. And there's a lot of stuff going on, and they were stuck at looking at all their losses. Mm. And there's a, I was working with one of the daughters, but eventually began working with the whole family system. And one of the first things we implemented was a master. I said, why don't we, I started with the girls and I said, why don't we work toward helping your family? And, and why don't we look at that? And so what they would do is they would tell their dad who was viewing him as a, himself as a huge failure because he had lost his company and, and wasn't providing for them. They were. They reminded him all the wonderful stuff they they've done. The, the 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 incredible vacations they took around the world when they were younger. All these great things, and once he started viewing himself in that manner again, he changed his perspective, and his business world started changing again. Now he's on the way to building an incredible, successful company, not because of anything changed with him, but his perspective and his family did that for him by not sitting around talking about what was wrong in their family, but what had been right and what is going to be right again in the future. One of the things I really love about those, <clears throat> excuse me, about those two stories that you just told, particularly the story of uh, working with the kid and, and the family and so forth, is that it, it, it demonstrated two really key points that work so intertwined they're almost inseparable. One is the importance of positivity and that the reason positivity is so important, or I should not say the reason, one of the reasons that positivity is so important is that people need to have positive feedback. They need to know that they have a good idea. Even if it's not an idea that's going to be implemented, they still need to know it's a good idea. In fact, here's the flip side of it. The mom, as the, in our example, the mom who wanted herself to be the solution was so frustrated that she wasn't the solution in one sense, as a person who didn't feel like her idea was being appreciated. And I wonder how many 
situations like that, not just family situations, but work situations, community organization, whatever it might be, I wonder how many organizations would be able to avoid some of those difficulties with people who become kind of clingy about their own ideas if they were just acknowledged for the good idea from the beginning. Um, And then by the same token, the people who tend to get stuck like that, their biggest challenge is to say, you know what? I do have that kind of ego side of me that wants to know that uh, I'm, I'm loved, that I'm appreciated, that this, you know, this idea I'm coming up with is great and so forth. So that when somebody does pat me on the back, I need to kind of take a step back and say, oh, okay, good. Now I don't have to hang on and you know, make it all about me solving the problem for them because it was never about me in the first place. It's a dual thing going on there. Right. That's the value of it. And that and when you when you break down a mastermind meeting and a mastermind concept, uh, it, it is that. It's not some crazy magical event that that we're summoning ancient spirits, even though there are some people that do that. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's not what we're talking about here. Uh, it, it's the idea that, that we're getting together and imagine you know, I know how my life feels when I'm positive, but when I have somebody giving feeding back that positive energy to me, the room intensifies in in that positive thinking process. It gets stronger and stronger, and it's like a wave. I, I, we often talk, you and I talk about the spiral, either upward or downward. Right. I try to spiral every room upward. My goal in every meeting is to spiral upward. One of the, one of the companies that I've done some consulting work with they had probably you had a very dysfunctional, uh, just an incredibly dysfunctional situation. The the owner of the company is from a very wealthy family, and they're losing all this money. and And he was just determined, and every, there was just it was a culture of tell on each other. It was it was it was incredibly bizarre. And so I had a meeting, and it started off with everybody wanted to point out where everybody was going wrong and it just it, no matter how hard i i i tried i couldn't it, you know couldn't change that because that's just the culture they were in which is frustrating but sometimes it, it, it really is it does and so what, what and i use i used a little bit of a, a reverse psychology technique here i said okay i said tell you what i said it's clear that no one is going to do this i said the family's looking for recommendations from me i said i, I said i've seldom used this I said, so I pointed to you know the, the biggest complainer, and I said, look, you obviously can't get on board with the family. I said, you can't. I started looking around the room. I said, why don't why don't we? I why, I guess I'm left with no option but to suggest that all of you be replaced. <laughs> Take it away from them. <laughs> yeah, dead silence. Everybody, and they're like, well, the, I, I thought you're here to repair things. I said, but you're just telling me that things can't be repaired. And, and so I have to report that everybody here – so we're agreeing as a meeting that none of us can get along and not, and, and we just probably need <laughs> – and one guy's like, well, that, that's not exactly what we're saying. I said, well, please tell me – and I pointed across the room to the two that were the biggest antagonists. I said, it's clear you have a real problem with uh, Dave over there. That, what his name? And I'm throwing that out there. Sure. And uh, and he said, he said, but tell me something that Dave does. He said, well, he said, you know, despite everything, he said, I, I, so we don't get along, but – there is nobody better at closing a contract than Dave. I said, "Wow!" I said, "Hallelujah!" Okay. So, Positivity. I, I said, "Well," I said, "Well," that, I said that. I said, "Dave," I said, "That I, I may consider as suggesting that Dave stays." But again, <laughs> Dave's been pretty good. I said, "Dave," I said, "The guy that just told you say his name's Tom. Tell me what Tom is. is does Tom? If I need to let Tom go, what happens? Well, you really can't let Tom go. He is really critical to this process." Even though we don't get along, I, I do see – by the time we're done, I won't go but through each one, but everybody, we, we started that dynamic. We totally rewired their thinking, and not that I, I would love for it to say that one meeting did it, but we had several meetings along the way weekly for about six months that made an incredible turn. It's a much less dysfunctional company now. That's a and great it, lesson, that what you yeah. just described there about – if you're in a difficult meeting situation and you want to turn it into a mastermind or more precisely into a positive mastermind rather than a negative one that tears everything down, what a great technique is that is to keep in mind to basically say, okay, I guess we got to throw in the towel because this isn't going to work. 
and then all of a sudden people start to remember why they were there in the first place. That, that's really good. Well, and, and that that happens a lot. And and one of the things that that I use one of my missions in life that I I, I would love to, to one of the most dysfunctional. Not and not intentionally. These are really good people, but you know the the foster care system. We've talked about that before. It, it's so sad. The workers are they feel overwhelmed. They feel they're they're not appreciated. The kids aren't being helped the way they're supposed to be helped. It, it's a very broken system. And and the idea that when I go and work with foster care providers and in these case workers and I motivate them to re- if I could get them to remember why they're doing yes I know everything you're telling me about the system is broken it's wrong and I get that there's a living human being that is depending on you if the system's broke I need you to help me fix it but that kid doesn't have time for six months from now for us to fix a broken system what are we doing now and once you can get somebody back to the point of why we're doing something You'll be amazed at that. The reason that you you and I do this every week, I think I look at it. I, I love sharing this message. I really do. It's a very positive message. It, it changed my life. It saved my life. I I don't do it perfectly, but I do it. I, I'm, you do it pretty I'm, darn well, I'll say. I I, I feel like I, I I love this. I still have a long way to go. Maybe I'm in third grade of it. You know. I, oh I no no no. You're, you're at least in high school. <laughs> okay. So but 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 either way, I, I'm very excited about all this stuff that it brings to the table. So you and I share this. But but if I can focus on, I enjoy talking to you every week. I really like look forward to this. I this know. Is, it's me it, too. This I, is, I have exactly the same feeling. I think, yeah. which is exactly why we keep doing it. I'm sure. Right. And and so the the, the concept that I I really believe one day somebody's going to listen. We're going to be doing a radio show. I believe that. But even if that doesn't happen, even if that doesn't t- come about, I'm still getting great value what we're doing. So I don't view it as a negative. That okay. You know, the, the, there's no negative attached to it. And if you get up every day and you start viewing your life, this is what I'm going to do. If you realize why you're going to work, you know, the idea that I have to, you know, I'm very much about inner dialogue. And one of the things that I try to encourage everybody and, and always to do, if you're saying I got to get up and go to work, I said right off the bat, you, you have a negative perspective you get to get up and go to work you get to do these things i get to do these things the all of this stuff i get to do changes the perspective when i'm having one of these mastermind meetings i i start with where are we going how what are we trying to do well, the positives and by keeping it elevated at a positive level i've seen some of the most hardcore negative people walk out of there almost intoxicated with positivity mm, yes Yes, it's amazing. It and, really and, is, and, and it also reminds me too of just how important it is to combine the mastermind with gratitude, uh, because well, we already know how powerful gratitude is. Uh, we know it intuitively. We know it scientifically. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll do a little bit of a of a detour here for a moment. Um, I, I've been writing some stuff uh, on Facebook aimed at people who are in various stages of depression, trying to give them tools on how to you know, turn things around. And in the course of doing research, one of my favorite sources, of course, is Sean Aker, who we've talked about often. And he's uh, one, of the, one of the main people out there pushing the idea of doing what he calls three gratitudes or what Martin Seligman calls three positive good things that happen in a day. And, you know, basically it's the exercise of either writing or, or speaking about three unique things that went very well that day so that you can keep building up a, a positive uh, aspect to your subconscious mind. Um, and what the studies have shown is that this is the part that amazes me. If you just do that by yourself for a week, six months later, they can actually detect an improvement in your overall happiness level. That, that, that's astonishing all by itself. Now combine the, the impact of a mastermind. What happens when you have more than one person doing the same kind of gratitude at the same, at the same time? Um, my wife and I experience that because we do the three gratitudes together every night. Um, but I'm just thinking, what happens when you have like a group of people all doing stuff that they're grateful for about whatever the situation is that they're discussing? I, I, I can only imagine how powerful that's got to be. It it really is, and I, I, you know, I get so excited when when we get to these topics, and and I suggest that we, you know, because we're we're as always we're, we're we're so full of of excitement about a topic that we're talking about that maybe next week we even continue on chapter 10 because it, it, it goes so much into 
you, you know, in depth of stuff. There's there's a, a paragraph, there's a statement as you go a little further down. Uh, it, it's talking about the the great steel entrepreneur Andrew Carnegie, the the one that sort of was is is the driving force behind the the creation of this book. Yeah, it's uh, the one basically teased fun, Hill into doing yeah, it in the first place. <laughs> exactly. Uh, see, he talks about the mastermind principle, or rather, the economic feature of it was first called to my attention by Andrew Carnegie over 25 years ago. That that's when he this Mr. Hill speaking, obviously. Uh, discovery of this principle is responsible for the choice of my life's work. Uh, that that's says a lot, but here, here's what really gets me. Mr. Carnegie's mastermind group consisted of a staff of approximately 50 men, oh. uh, which is amazing, with whom he surrounded himself with for the definite purpose, if there, this is the reason, of manufacturing and marketing steel. Now, that that that's why they got together. It, there could be more, probably no more boring topic than man, manufacturing, marketing, steel. But they they had a mastermind group to do that. Well, if there is a more boring topic, it would probably put us to sleep trying to think of it. So. <laughs> exactly. But here, here here's the line that I wanted to get at right here. He attributed he attributed his entire fortune to the power he accumulated through this mastermind. That that to me, every time I read that, this is one of the great entrepreneurs of, of the history of the United States contributed. He, he contributes his wealth and power and success from what he gathered or accumulated for this mastermind group right. of 50 men. Yeah. That's, that's amazing to me. And it, it shows truly what the power is. I mean, um, this, this whole chapter starts off with the concept of power and that's a little bit confusing because power can be a lot of things. It could be political power. It can be electric power. There's a lot of different kinds of power out there. But the kind of power he's talking about is this positive, reinforcing group power, the, the power of many minds focusing on one thing at one time. And I'm sure that's why Carnegie became wealthy. I'm sure that's why most people become wealthy. I mean, they surround themselves with a whole bunch of people who are all committed to positively contributing to the solution of problem X, whatever problem X is. And that that that's uh, that helps us see as we're working on things how why we need to incorporate a mastermind. Mo- most people, the idea seems sort of bizarre at first. I, I, I've invited people to a mastermind group before, and I've always been amazed at the ones that didn't show up because I would think that would probably be one of the most important meetings you could go to. Um, I. I uh, one night I invited, uh, uh, I think it was six people. Five of the six showed up. It was it was the, one of the most incredible meetings I'd ever had. I felt left feeling great. The one person I saw them say, hey, you didn't make it the other night. And he literally he said, yeah, there was this TV show I needed. I, I, I was <laughs> and, I, and I laughed to myself going, wow, you you – you stayed home, and you, you don't know what you missed. And and it's something that that I, I don't think our audience knows what they're missing because again, it's so easy to gloss over this stuff. Well, and, it's also it's we, such a new concept. I mean, I've read this book how many times now, and other than talking with you, I can't even think of any. Oh, talking with my wife too. Other than talking to you and my wife, I can't think of anybody I've ever talked with where we've actually talked about a mastermind. It's not part of our normal daily conversation. So it's not terribly surprising that person number six stayed away. But you're right. It's it's disappointing because he didn't really realize what it was he missed. One of the things that I, I was looking through, I don't even know why I got this email one day. So, I, I again, I, I don't know what this was about. But I, I received an email from a person at the time I had no idea. And that was where I had my foster son and I had a lot more flexibility. And... It said, I would like to invite you to a mastermind meeting that I'm having at my office Tuesday night. Oh, wow. Never heard of this guy. I said, okay, why not? You know, I'll go. Wow, incredibly powerful. He, he, he said he reached out to me because he saw my website and saw that I, I probably think like there was 12 of us. It was very intense, and I developed – not only did I get some great ideas and a great motivation for the week, there were 11 people that I'd never met before that I now have contacts with. There are level 11 people that are all excited about this. There, I have 
I have expanded my my pool of support by 11 very bright people. That's incredible to me. That, that's and fantastic. Could, I mean, I, I, I can't remember the last time that happened, to be honest. Well, and, and what you could do is, and I encourage our audience, that, that here there's, there's I think it's called Meet Meetup, or there's all kinds of little websites that do this, but there's people that subscribe to your area. A lot of times there's yoga people, and, and what, why don't you, uh, not you in particular, but you may consider this, <laughs> Walt, uh, it, it, it's put in, pick a time, go to the public library, ask if you have a meeting hall. It's always free if you meet in the back. Say 6 o'clock Tuesday night, I'm having a mastermind meeting. Everyone's invited. Now, nobody may show up. You and your wife may show up, have your own mastermind meeting there. The librarian may show up, or there may be 10 people that show up. But whatever, throw it out there. Let's see what happens. It's interesting uh, you should mention that because we actually did that one time. Um, we literally did it through meetup.com. And the purpose of the meetup, uh, I didn't actually call it a mastermind, but it was <laughs> basically the concept was threaded throughout the message. And it, the, the topic was happiness. The topic was how to incorporate more happiness into our lives. And we scheduled a, a series of them. The first meeting, my wife and I showed up. The second meeting, my wife and I showed up. The third meeting, my wife and I showed up. The fourth meeting, eight people showed up. Right. And I had no way of knowing how that was going to happen or that right. it was going to happen at all. It, it's the same thing. I, as, as our audience that listens every week knows, I'm, I'm in recovery from a gambling addiction now for 21, going on 22 years. And I've, uh, uh, I have started a few Gamblers and Honest meetings in my time. But I originally started a meeting in Bradenton, Florida at a hospital on a Monday night. And the first nine weeks, that's a long time, mm. I was the only one at that meeting. And, and boy, does that play on you. I mean, that, that's really tough. It's hard on your ego. It's hard on your, self your, your self-confidence. It's hard on everything. And when I, was, when I finally moved out of the area, that meeting was regularly attended by 12 to 15 people every week. Wow. When, when Congratulations. I returned, when I returned to the area, I've been long since forgotten. You know, uh, there was really hardly anybody left that when I was there. I went back to that meeting, and there was still 15 or 16 people there. No kidding. It was wonderful. I did not mention or take credit for the meeting, but it felt great that I could be back there. In fact, it was, it was funny that when I walked in, the, the chairman said, now, are you new to Gamblers Anonymous? Yeah. And, uh, I said, no, but I said, I'm just visiting. Thank you. And, uh, uh, by the end of the meeting, somebody said, aren't you the, uh, I think I know you. Yeah. Nobody ever put together that I started the meeting, but it was great that I could go back and see that. It, it's the same thing with the, this, the, the concept of the mastermind. They're, they're, I know we every week we talk about we say something that this is the most important thing, you know. So I mean, I, I I think we're losing credibility with what is the most important <laughs> thing. But this this is the the reason that they're all the most important thing is they lead one step leads to the next. This step of the mastermind, it I have seen it fix families, I have seen it fix companies, I've seen it change people's lives. It isn't like you think it would be until you implement it. There is no more powerful tool in the implementation of the law of attraction than the mastermind meeting done in a proper manner. Nothing. That, that, and, that's, that's a great message. And, and uh, even though we only have a couple of minutes left, perhaps it's the best message to leave on. But you're absolutely right. There is nothing more powerful. In fact, you're inspiring me right now. You're inspiring me to, to apply it in a particular instance in my life that I, I hadn't really thought about applying it, but but you know what? I need to apply it there. So if nothing else, you accomplished that today. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. And, and my one of the experiments that I have that I'm brewing right now is I am actually working on a, a mastermind meeting for a group of foster care kids uh, that are going to get together. They have no idea what they're in store for. I want to, I'm going to bribe them with pizza to start it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll prime the well with some pizza. There you go. Uh, but I want to implement that as well, so I'll be interested to see how that goes. But it, again, the, this is a very exciting topic, and, and the idea that we get to bring it to our, our audience, uh, if, if every week they hear, well, this is really important, 
this is the bread and butter of the law of attraction right here. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And uh, while we have just a few seconds left, remind everybody, subscribe to us at LOAToday.net. Subscribe to us at the iTunes store. Find us at YouTube.com. Find us on Facebook. And Joel, as usual, it's been a wonderful pleasure. Love talking to you today, Walt. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.